Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and part 3 of my upgrade to my HP 3245A Universal Source. In the previous videos you saw me make some modifications to the inside, I replaced the front panel and the VFD and got the unit up and running. Now I did publish a short, I'll play it right now so you can see it, and I had an issue with the BNC connectors and I want to do something about that. So here it is. This is why I hate BNCs in the Metrology game. Here's my 3245A here, cabled up to my 3458A and you can see that the voltage is reading just about 10 microvolts over 1 volt. And I've got quality connectors used here. So if I just unplug the BNC here, it's a silver plated BNC with a copper insert, with a gold insert, sorry. If I just unplug it, plug it straight back in again, and look at the voltage, and it drops like a stone, down to where it should be. Because if you look up here, that's what I recorded at, at 24.1 degrees, and that was, oh, a month or so ago. So I'm not actually going to remove these BNCs or pull them and replace them or anything like that. I'm actually going to try and make use of these option holes over the right hand side here. And I'm going to fit my own banana plugs. And what I've come across is this here, gold plated, and these two banana sockets are actually bonded together with this plastic sort of bracket there. And actually that'll go nicely on the front there avoiding the use of any nuts or anything like that and also avoiding having to make any modifications to the front panel. I want this to be totally reversible. And of course I will need to cable it up internally so let me get a cover off of this 3245A and show you what I'm going to do inside. So here we are inside the 3245A. You can see the back of the front panel here and this is actually the output BNC in here and you can see there's a cable coming off and down onto the main analog board there. So it's a very, very short run. So what I'm going to do is fit my two banana sockets and tie it in off the same output from that main board. So there is the output there, as you can see, and it does actually look like it was made for some sort of connector that they've never actually used and they just soldered it straight onto the PCB. Now I would have preferred to try and get a cable identical to this one here and I've just not had a lot of luck in actually procuring one. So I'm actually going to use my own cable. And I'm going to use this here. This is ETFE cable. This is what I bought from uh, AB Precision over in Germany for metrology use. And I think it's the next best thing to PTFE. Uh, ETFE being ethylene tetrafluoroethylene. And obviously PTFE being poly tetrafluoroethylene. Well, ETFE and PTFE are very good insulators due to their low dielectric constants and ETFE isn't that far away from PTFE so I think I should be okay with this here so obviously I just need another little short run uh, similar to what's on the board already so I'll go and prepare that and let's get it ready for fitting so there's my cable already this end's already tinned up and soldered, ready to go onto the PCB. And the other end here, I've got my ring crimps to go onto the back of the banana sockets. And you might notice that I haven't soldered them. And the reason for that is, I don't want to introduce another metal um, between the actual wire itself, the core itself, and the actual crimp because I think that just adds to thermal EMF issues. So the least amount of solder the better. So next thing is let's get the caps removed off of that front panel and get the banana sockets fitted. Okay so let's get the caps off. There's one and two. And there are the banana sockets all ready to go on. Feed this through from the outside. Hopefully they're long enough that I can get this cap on the back and also the nuts. Okay, and that's it fit as you can see. I'll just go away and tighten that up now. Uh, 
and now I'll fit the cable. Now I'm not actually going to fit a lock washer because I don't have a gold plated one and I don't want to introduce another type of metal on there as before. There we go. Now just a short loop and I should be able to manage to solder it onto the PCB there. Perfect. There's it all soldered in place. And I've tried to keep the wire away from the other ones as much as possible. So let me turn the unit around and let me show you it from the front. And there it is there. And it actually looks like it was meant to be there. And the ground at the bottom and I've got the signal at the top. Perfect. Now what I will do is, I'm going to get my Dymo out. I'm actually going to rename these here. Because uh, obviously it's no longer an output or a sync output. And uh, I'll get some Dymo labels printed up and I'll put them on the front there. So there it is. I don't think it looks too bad at all. Now before I go and put the actual case back on, I'm actually going to go and take some IPA and clean off the flux off of that soldering that I'd just done on the PCB. Well, there it is, up and running, and the output's working perfectly. So I think the next test I'm going to do is actually put it back in place, the unit back in place in the corner of my workshop there, as it was originally, and let's do an overnight test, and let's see if we get any jump in the output like we did with the BNCs. Hopefully not. Well, here's the 3245A all set up. Now, it's not overnight yet, but I have noticed something, and I don't think the problem's fixed. Let's see if I can reproduce it. If you look down on here, I've got just 79 at the end there. So let me just pull the cable, plug it back in again. MPLC of 100 on the 3458A. And look at that. jumps straight back up again exhibiting exactly the same problem as it was with the BNC. Let me just try and pull the positive out and plug it back in again. It still sits high and it's not like I've got a dodgy connection because I can wiggle these around including the guard connection there. And it doesn't jump back down. <laughs> Look at that. Way back down 83. I'll wiggle them around again. No, there's no bad connections anywhere. And this is a different cable. This one's got bananas at this end here as well as the other end. So... It's just a cable I had lying around, but I just don't understand why that's happening. Let's pull the positive only and plug it back in again. Wait until it settles again. Wow! Let me try changing the cable for a completely different type of cable and see what happens. Okay, this is just a simple unshielded PTFE cable let's see how that fares let it settle ok 821 let's pull it out plug it back in again and bear in mind my original 3245A here exhibits exactly the same problem. Look at that. Jump straight back down. So it's not the cable. Okay, PDVS2 Mini hooked up. And I'm reading about 393. Let me pull the connectors. Plug them back in again. 376. Try it again. Wow. It does have the same problem with the PDVS2 Mini. Have I got a 3458A problem? Wow. And these are gold contacts on this cable as well. 
139 let me just pull that one there and plug it back in again 39 well I'm actually at a loss as to what the problem is if you've got any idea what the problem is or if you've experienced this before comment down below and I'll take a look and let's see if I can get this issue fixed but right now I don't know how to proceed thanks for watching